Welcome back to the War Grove of Well. In today's video, we are going to be explaining the Caradron Overlord's battle line. Before we get started, I'd like to do some explaining as to what my hiatus was about. So, if you were unaware or not a part of the Discord channel, I contracted COVID and I have been really sick for the past two ish weeks. And I had already planned to take a week break for. Christmas when th that was passing. So that is why there hasn't been an upload in about 22 days. I apologize for all that, but I needed to focus on my family and my health. But I'm starting to feel much better. You could probably hear it in my voice, but I'm still a little congested and nasally, but I'm feeling fine enough to start recording videos again. So hopefully this means that it'll be back to the weekly uploads. I'm sorry for any in inconvenience this has caused. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, to start off, we have the Arcanaut Company. They come in at 90 points for 10 models, and they have a plethora of weapon profiles. This is something you will notice across anything to do with Caradron Overlords, is that they seem to have 101 profiles for a single unit. I have tried to rearrange my usual profile um, display, so it's easier to read all of these different uh, weapons. If you like this style over my previous iteration, please let me know in the comments and I will use this moving forward. Uh, this was a whole lot easier for me anyway. For their base stat line, they have four inch move, six bravery, one wound and a four up save. And to start with their many missile weapons, there is the privateer pistol, nine inch reach, two attacks, forced to hit, forced to wound, no rend, one damage. The Volley Gun, which is 12 inch reach, 6 attacks, 5 to hit, 4 to wound, 1 rent, 1 damage. The Light Sky Hook, 18 inch reach, 1 attack, 4s and 3s to hit, and wound, 2 rend, d3 damage. The Aether Flare Pistol, 9 inch reach, 2 attacks, 4s to hit, 3s to wound, no rend, 1 damage. And then the Volley Pistol, 9 inch reach, 3 attacks. 4s to hit, 4s to wound, no rend, 1 damage. For melee weapons, they have the Arcanaut Cutter, 1 inch reach, 1 attack, 4s and 4s to hit and wound, no rend, 1 damage. The Gun Butt, 1 inch reach, 1 attack, 4s to hit, 5s to wound, no rend, 1 damage. And then finally, the Sky Pike, 2 inch reach, 2 attacks, 4s to hit, 4s to wound, 1 rend, d3 damage. Now, their unique abilities are fairly skim. It's mostly just how the different weapon rules work and how many of the special weapons you can take. So, 1 in 10 can replace their Privateer Pistol and Cutter with a Volley Gun and Gun Butt. 1 in 10 can replace their Pistol and Cutter with the Skyhook and Gun Butt. And then 1 in 10 can replace their Pistol with the Sky Pike. The other two abilities are all about objectives. Arcanaut Company are your main objective holders, and so they like to be near objectives. You can reroll Battleshock while you are near an objective, and they get an innate plus one to hit if they are wholly within nine of an objective. So the battlefield role for the Arcanaut Company is very simple. They are just cheap troops, objective holders, and they have a lot of ranged firepower. To maximize their efficientness, you want to keep them near um, any objective, and you just kind of want to have them sit there. They are a good defensive unit. Um, any squad size can do, but really I would recommend minimum, minimum squad size because doubling up doesn't really provide you that much benefit besides getting some more of these special weapons. And at that point, you're better off spending those 90 points on some of the heavier hitters. So there's nothing wrong with doubling up or reinforcing. I just think they work best in MSU. On to the Endron Riggers, the Balloon Boys. They are battle line if you have an Endron Master General, and they come in at 120 points. Their base stat line is 12 inch move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 4 up save. Their missile weapons are the Volley Gun, 24 inch reach, 6 attacks, 4s to hit, 4s to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. The Grapnel Launcher or Skyhook, they share the same profile but have different special abilities. They have a 24 inch reach, 1 attack, 4s to hit, 3s to wound, 2 rend, 3 damage. The Drill Launcher, 24 inch reach, 1 attack, 4s to hit, 3s to wound, 3 rend, d3 damage. 
and then the rapid fire rivet gun. 12 inch reach, 3 attacks, 3 is to hit, 4 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And they have two melee profiles, the gun butt, which is the same profile as the Arcanaut Company, and the Aethermatic Saw. One inch reach, one attack each, threes to hit, twos to wound, two rend, d3 damage. And you're going to be noticing a, <clears throat> a, uh, a trend here with the unique abilities. The first few are always going to be the rules for how you can equip the special weapons, and here it's no different. 1 and 3 can replace their rivet gun and saw for the volley gun and gun butt, and 1 and 3 can replace the rivet gun for the drill launcher or the grapnel launcher slash skyhook. One model can be the leader, and this gives them a plus one attack to their melee attacks. <laughs> Excuse me. Six is to hit with the drill launcher, deal d3 mortal wounds. At the start of your hero phase, you can pick one Sky Vessel within one inches, and you roll one dice for each Endrin Rigger in your unit. Each 4-up is a heal to that Sky Vessel. So they're kind of like, their whole idea is they're floating around nearby their big boats to repair it as it's going along. Enemy units cannot retreat if they are within three inches of a Grapnel Launcher, or a unit with a Grapnel Launcher. They can hitch a ride on the side of a sky vessel when it flies high. So basically, you can be considered uh, part of their garrison for movement purposes uh, without taking up garrison slots in the sky vessels. And then lastly, they get a plus one to charge if there is a model with the sky hook. Endrin Riggers are your Sky Vessel Support Infantry. They have some flexible ranged options and are overall a good flex pick. They can do a lot of different tasks and are really good to have near your boats to just kind of follow them around and heal them up and just provide auxiliary fire. To maximize the efficientness of Endrin Riggers, I would keep them near a Sky Vessel at all times and consider taking in a squad of six or more to double up or triple up on these special weapon options. Next we have the Sky Wardens. Now these are the kit counterpart to the Endron Riggers. They are built from the same kit. They are battle line if you have an Endron Master General. They come in at 105 points. Their stat line is the same as the Endron Riggers. 12 inch move, seven bravery, two wounds and a four up save. And their missile weapons are pretty much the same as well. The volley gun, grapnel launcher or skyhook, drill launcher, all the same. They don't have the pistols though, they have the vulcanizer. The vulcanizer profile is nine inch reach, two attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. The missile weapons are the same as well, except for the sky pike. The sky pike is two inch reach, two attacks, fours to hit, threes to wound, one rend, D3 damage. Unique abilities, one and three can replace their Vulcanizer for Volley Gun and Gun Butt. One and three can replace the Vulcanizer and Sky Pike for the Drill Launcher and Gun Butt, or the Grapnel Launcher slash Skyhook and Gun Butt. One and five can be the Leader, which gives plus one to melee attacks. Six to hit with the Drill Launcher, deal D3 mortal wounds. Enemies cannot retreat if they are within three inches of a Grapnel Launcher. They can hit your ride and they get the same plus one charge. So you're probably asking, what makes these guys different from a Endron Rigger? Well, they do a lot of mine work. As you can see on their models, they have those floating mines next to their balloons, which seems kind of like a hazard to me, but I'm not a Dwarden. Uh, <clears throat> how this appears in game is if an enemy that can fly ends a charge within one inch, you roll a dice for each model in the enemy's unit, and sixes deal one mortal wound. So that is just innate. It's really good for preventing a large blob of flying infantry. Now, off the top of my head, I don't know of a lot of high model count flying infantry. The first thing that comes to mind is um, crypt ghouls, if you give them a spell that um, lets them fly in one of the sub-factions, I'm having a hard time remembering what the actual sub-faction is, but that's the only one that I can think of. Please uh, correct me if I'm wrong or if there's more uh, infantry flyers around there. 
And then the other one is you roll dice for each enemy unit within three inches before you make a retreat move, and each four up is a d3 mortal wounds. I'm not going to mince words here. Sky Wardens are the cheaper, worse Endron Riggers. The idea, in my opinion, I think, between the two is Sky Wardens are supposed to be a little bit more offensive, whereas Endron Riggers are more support and defensive. But they don't really do it all that well. I mean, the Mortal Wounds on Retreat is really nice, but the Mortal Wounds on Charge for Enemy Flyers is kind of niche, and you're probably not going to get too much value out of it. Honestly, I would never take Sky Wardens over Endron Riggers, but if you just don't have the points for Endron Riggers, you can take some Sky Wardens and they'll perform vaguely similarly. Um, but when you do take Sky Wardens, consider taking an MSU to maximize the Mortal Wound output. Onto the Grundstock Thunderers. They are battle line if you are in the Barrack Nor subfaction, and they come in at 135 points. They have 4 inch move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds and a 4 up save, a ton of missile profiles, starting with the Aether Shot Rifle, 18 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3 is to hit, 4 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage, the double barreled Aether Shot Rifle, same thing as the regular Aether Shot, you just get 2 more attacks. The Fumigator, 9 inch reach, 3 attacks, 3 is to hit, 3 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. The Deck Sweeper, 12 inch reach, 4 attacks, 4 is to hit, 4 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. The Aether Cannon, 12 inch reach, 1 attack, 4 is to hit, 2 is to wound, uh, 2 rend, and D3 damage. And then the, finally, the Mortar, 12 inch reach, 1 attack, 4 is to hit, 3 is to wound, no rend, D3 damage. For melee weapons, they have the Drill Bill, 3 inch reach, D3 attacks, 4 is to hit, 4 is to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage and the gun butt. 1 inch reach, 1 attack, 4 is to hit, 4 is to wound, no rend, and 1 damage. So to make a long story short, you can take pretty much one of each of the weapons as long as you are replacing the Aether Shot Rifle. You get one Mortar, one Cannon, one Fumigator, and one Deck Sweeper, and then the leader in the unit gets the Double Barreled Rifle and Drill Bill. One in one of the five can have a banner. You can see it in the picture. The one guy has that little standard on his backpack. That gives you rerolling battle shock. And then how all of these weapons kind of distinguish themselves is you get a minus one to enemy hit rolls if they are within three inches of a unit equipped with the fumigator. Note to all of the following is that they do not apply if they are in a garrison. So if they are in a boat, none of these special rules will apply. They get plus one attack to missile weapons targeting enemy units within three inches of them. And if you have one of each of the following, mortar, deck sweeper, and cannon, uh, you get plus one to hit for those three weapons. So besides the nightmare that is the billion and one different ranged profiles, these are your elite close ranged missile infantry. They have a lot of different missile profiles, but they are an offensively geared unit. You want them to get up in the enemy's face and blast them. The plus one attack is a huge uh, damage multiplier because it applies to all ranged weapons if you are shooting into combat, so within three inches. This means you want them to be on your front lines and just start shooting. Um, so if you really want to maximize their efficiency, have them in larger squads so they can stay alive longer and have them be your frontline offensive infantry. Before we move on to the battle line boats, I'd like to give an extra special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, I don't think I would have made it through uh, the month of December. It's been a really rough uh, winter season for me, but thank you all for your support. An extra special thanks to Nick Hoff and our latest Patreon supporter, Ethan Goddard. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there will be a link in the description below, as well as a link to the Discord channel. So I'd like to see you all there. Our first boat we're going to be talking about is the Grund Stock Gun Hauler, or Gun Hauler for short. It is battle line if you are in the Barak Urzban subfaction. They come in at 155 points. They have a stat line of 12 inch move, 7 bravery, 10 wounds, and a 4 up save. They have 
a kind of reasonable amount of missile profiles. The Sky Cannon with either shrapnel ammo or shell ammo. The shrapnel ammo is 18 inch reach, D6 uh, six attacks, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, uh, 1 rend, do, uh, 2 damage. The shell ammo, 24 inch reach, 1 attack, 3's to hit, 2's to wound, 2 rend, D6 damage. The drill cannon, 36 inch reach, 1 attack, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 3 rend, D3 damage. And then the aether shot carbine. 12 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3's to hit, 4's to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And then the boarding weapons for melee. 1 inch reach, 4 attacks, 4's to hit, 4's to wound, 1 rend, or excuse me, no rend, 1 damage. For unique abilities, they have a few. Once per battle, you can do all steam ahead and add 6 inches to their movement. And they have a 6 plus bodyguard wound or mortal wound negation if they are within 3 inches of another sky vessel. So how it works is if this unit is within 3 of another sky vessel, whenever that bigger sky vessel uh, takes damage, you can... it basically gives that um, boat a 6 plus negation. <clears throat> this is a very good um, ability to have because a lot of your bigger boats are going to be wanted to focus down heavily by your enemy. Uh, at the start of combat phase, you can drop some bombs on some enemies. You pick one enemy unit within one inch, roll a dice, and on a four-up you deal d3 mortal wounds. It can retreat and shoot as long as it is not retreating from an enemy flying unit. It can teleport or fly high, uh, following the normal teleport rules. Uh, fives to hit with the drill cannon, deal d3 mortal wound. And you cannot do both the shrapnel ammo and the shell. You have to pick one or the other when using the sky cannon. The gun hauler is a fantastic little boat. It is your light escort boat. It is great for screening, it is good for movement tools, and it has good shooting options. Uh, to maximize their efficientness, I would have one gun hauler for every larger gun boat that you have, then that's a minimum. You always want to have one nearby your bigger boats so you can give them that damage negation. And then I would always equip the gun hauler with the sky cannon. It's just a flat out better choice. Last but not least, we have the Arknot Frigate. This is a battle line in the Barak Zifflin subfaction. It comes in at 250 points. For basic stat line, it has a degrading chart for movement that also gets rid of its disengage and fly high rules as it takes wounds. It has 8 bravery, 14 wounds, and a 4 up save. It has a heavy sky cannon with shrapnel or shell rounds. These act similarly to the basic sky cannon that you saw on the gun hauler. The shrapnel ammo is 24 inch reach, d6 attacks, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 1 rend, 2 damage, and the shell, 30 inch reach, 1 attack, 3's to hit, 2's to wound, 2 rend, d6 damage, and then the heavy skyhook, 24 inch reach, 1 attack, 3's to hit, 2's to wound, 2 rend, d6 damage, and then the aether shot carbines, 12 inch reach, 4 attacks, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 1 rend, 2 damage. For melee weapons, they have the boarding weapons, 1 inch reach, a degrading chart for attacks, force to hit, force to wound, no rend, 1 damage. This is a transport vehicle, so it can garrison up to 15 friendly marine units. Marine is just a keyword that applies to some of the infantry. Uh, if you have more than 10 garrisoned in it, though, you half the model's movement and it cannot fly high, so it cannot teleport. Generally speaking, this is enough of a downside that you only want to garrison 10 units in it. Or 10 models, excuse me. In the hero phase, it heals one wound and it can reroll run and charge, or excuse me, run rolls. At the start of the combat phase, you pick one enemy unit within one inch and roll a dice. You add the bomb rack, uh, bomb rack modifier from the table, and on a four up, you deal D3 mortal wounds. It can retreat and shoot if it is not retreating from a flying enemy. This is the disengage rule. It can teleport, fly high, following normal teleport rules. If it is armed with the heavy skyhook, you get a plus two to charge. And similarly to the gunboat, you must choose either shrapnel or shell when, hire, when firing with the heavy sky cannon. The Arconaut Frigate is your second largest boat available to carry on overlords, and it is your main transport boat. It has a great deal of versatile firepower, and 
you're mostly going to be using it as that transport to get your Thunderers up in the business of your enemies, to move around your very slow moving infantry, or otherwise just give you transport tools. It is a fantastic boat to have and definitely something you should have one or two of minimum. And that was it for the Caradron Overlords Battle Line. They have some really fun models and a really interesting playstyle. So if you kind of like that uh, more steampunky aesthetic and maybe enjoy some more 40k style armies, this is probably the closest you're going to get. Uh, with the transport rules and the focus on ranged firepower and all of the special weapons, if you prefer uh, 40k and you know the rules of 40k a lot better, Caradron Overlords is going to feel very similar to the basic 40k formula. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving a like or a comment. And if you'd like to see more of this type of content in the future, consider subscribing. This has been the Wargrove of Will, and I'll talk to you guys next time.